And it happened that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him. That is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about 12 men in all. Amen. I am now preaching by the title of Did You Receive the Holy Spirit When You Believed? This question is very crucial, very important, because we all are supposed to have the Holy Spirit when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the one who is sending us the Holy Spirit, the Counselor. The Holy Spirit will come through the Lord Jesus Christ from the Father God. Now, according to the will of God, Paul came back to Ephesus. Did you remember what? When he uh, first visited Ephesus, many people came to uh, Lord Jesus Christ, believing in uh, God, and became Christians. And they wanted Paul to stay longer. But Paul said, if God was, I will come back. And according to the will of God, yes, he is now coming back. And the first question he raised to uh, the uh, uh, Ephesian people, the disciples who were uh, believing in Jesus Christ, that did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And when they heard this question, they answered, no, we never even heard about what is the Holy Spirit. And there, Paul had a focus upon the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ uh, sending the Holy Spirit, as he said, you wait and pray. And when God is giving you the Holy Spirit, you will be possessed by the Holy Spirit. And uh, the 120 uh, people gathered there in Jerusalem. In their prayer, they waited for the Holy Spirit to come. Yes, finally, on the Pentecost, uh, they got the Holy Spirit when they were praying. Each one was possessed by the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, when uh, the people answered to Paul, no, we never heard about the Holy Spirit. What is that? And then Paul said, then which, uh, by what have you baptized? And they said, we were baptized through the baptism of John the Baptist. And there uh, Paul said, see what John the Baptist said. He said, I am waiting for the one mightier than me, who is the Son of God, the Lamb of God, who will come and who will give us the Holy Spirit. So, Paul made a quotation from what John the Baptist said about the Lord Jesus Christ. As you know, John the Baptist was the one who, were, who was preparing for the path of the Lord Jesus Christ to come. So, people will open their hearts, ready to receive the words of 
Lord Jesus Christ, and they were uh, get, uh, got they got the Holy Spirit as Paul prayed for them, as he laid his hands upon them, and they all got the Holy Spirit, and they were beginning speaking the tongues, and they were uh, prophesying. Do you remember what today my focus of today's uh, preach uh, uh, the preach is? Two. One is to understand what is the baptism of the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit through Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, how we, uh, how we pass from uh, the teaching of the John the Baptist to Lord Jesus Christ. We all, like John the Baptist, are the ones preparing for the path of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, when Jesus comes, yes, uh, we surrender everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. We introduce uh, people uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ saying, See, the Lamb of God. This is Jesus Christ. So let all people listen to the Jesus Christ speaking and teaching. So this is our role to introduce Jesus to everyone. So Whenever and wherever we go and we meet people, we say, Jesus Christ will say. So, uh, this is the way that we have two topics today. You know what? When uh, John the Baptist uh, uh, had a ministry, many people came to him asking whether he was the Messiah, the Christ. And there he didn't say, I am. No, he said, I am not. I am not, but he will come uh, who is uh, behind me, and mightier than me. Uh, I'm not worthy of uh, uh, taking care of his sandals. And uh, he said, he must increase, but I must decrease. So many of his disciples came to Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, one example we find in John chapter 1, 35, 36. It is said, The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. So he spoke to his two disciples. And the one of the two disciples were the Andrew, the brother of the Peter. So Andrew came to Lord Jesus Christ. Andrew was disciple of John the Baptist, but now he came to Lord Jesus Christ. When his teacher, John the Baptist, said, Behold the Lamb of God. In the sense, he sent his disciple to Lord Jesus Christ to become the disciple of Jesus. Brothers and the sisters, the John the Baptist baptism was the baptism of repentance. But Jesus, who was the Son of God, who had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who commanded his dis disciples to come and wait for the Holy Spirit. So they all were possessed by the Holy Spirit uh, in the Pentecost. And that Holy Spirit is the ultimate power of us. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. God said, but by my spirit, by the Holy Spirit, we can do. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Holy Spirit. So we all need to trust in the Holy Spirit. And we all need to wait for Holy Spirit to come. Hallelujah. Amen. So the fruit as Christians, we bear like a good tree bears good fruit. We like the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22-23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, Against such things, there is no law. So those fruits of the Holy Spirit 
Uh, be the fruits that Jesus is looking for. And Romans chapter, verse, chapter 8 verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and the death. So what sets us free from the law of sin and death is the law of the Spirit of life. So Holy Spirit will come to us and to save us, to set us free from the law of sin and the death. If we were bound uh, 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 of uh, the law of uh, the sin and the faith, no one might live, no one might be free from the bondage of the death. Now let's come into the scripture. When Apollo was staying in Corinth for his mission, previously in the session, the same uh, same uh, you know at the scripture he wanted to go to Achaia province in which we had Athen and Corinth and the people uh, in uh, Ephesus blessed him uh, as you know Priscilla and Aquila and all Christians they blessed and they wrote a letter to the brothers and sisters there in Corinth to welcome Apollos as teachers so Apollo uh, now is staying in uh, Corinth. And Paul is now coming into uh, the Ephesus. And he met some disciples. Uh, and he raised a question, that pre, a crucial question, that did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? That was the ultimate concern for Paul. Because Paul, in his ministry, he was focusing upon the delivering uh, the baptism of the Jesus Christ, which was the Holy Spirit baptism. You know what? By the Holy Spirit, we be possessed, and we know we are but the sinners, but we do not stay in the sin anymore. We die out of our past, the sinful nature, together with the Lord Jesus Christ as he crucified himself upon the cross. And now we live again, in the Lord, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, death will be applied to our sinful nature, the past that we committed sins, that we were sinners, we were enemies to God, and, but the live new life will come to us uh, through Lord Jesus Christ as he become the first fruit of the resurrection. So, brothers and the sisters, by the Holy Spirit, baptism, we die of the past, the sinful nature, and we live of the new nature in Christ Jesus. So anyone who is in Christ Jesus will be a new creature. The old passed away, the new has come. Hallelujah. So this newness we find by, by this uh, baptism of Jesus Christ, which was by the Holy Spirit. They said, we never heard about the Holy Spirit. Uh, <clears throat> So now we find that uh, there are some people who were uh, educated, taught the dimension of John the Baptist, who were the person preparing for the path of Lord Jesus Christ, whose teaching and whose baptism was incomplete. When uh, you be taught, when you were educated, when you were baptized together with John the Baptist, it is only useful as you wait for the Lord Jesus Christ, who is to baptize us by the Holy Spirit, which makes us complete. So, the disciples in the Ephesus that Paul met were the disciples of John the Baptist, incomplete baptism and incomplete understanding of the gospel. Now we think about John the Baptist, uh, who was uh, in Judean desert and uh, who proclaimed the baptism of repentance, who said, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. So he challenged the people for their repenting their sins, and then he baptized them by the water. We know the difference between 
John the Baptist's baptism and Jesus' baptism. First of all, John the Baptist was a person, a man. But Jesus is not a man. He, is, he was a son of God and he himself was a God. The second person in the Trinity. The son, God. So Jesus, when he baptized, that is that we come into the Holy Spirit, which is another person in the Trinity. So by Jesus' baptism, we come into the full understanding of the Trinity, which is quite different from the baptism of John the Baptist. It is the uh, you know, it is baptism that uh, we had by the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It is the way that we die by the past, by the sin, and we live uh, by the resurrection. That is the new life as the new creature given to us. And also by the Holy Spirit that through Lord Jesus Christ, as he commanded, you wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And finally, at the Pentecost, they were all possessed by the Holy Spirit. Yes, by that, we know the Spirit of God through Lord Jesus Christ is coming to us. And then we are now living as possessed by the Holy Spirit. So we have a full understanding of the scripture. And we are now uh, you know, at the, uh, proclaiming the good news to all the people, regardless of any hardships laying our even uh, life for Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who is baptizing us by the Holy Spirit. By this, all the promises of the Old Testament be fulfilled, like Joel, uh, when he proclaimed that uh, in, at the, uh, in the day when uh, the time comes, all people like uh, young and old, the man and woman be possessed by the Holy Spirit, and they will be uh, pro prophesying, and they will have the dream, and they will have the vision. So all uh, in my Old Testament, uh, you know, uh, promises and for, uh, prophecies. Not only Joel, but also Ezekiel and Jeremiah and the prophets be fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ, who fulfilled all the laws and prophets as he sent the Holy Spirit to us. Amen. And Paul said to the disciples who, were, uh, who said to Paul, we never heard about the Holy Spirit. and We only got the baptism through the John the Baptist. And there Paul said, John, when he baptized the baptism of repentance, he said, To believe in the one who was to come after him, that is Jesus. So, John the Baptist spoke to the people about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is to come. And finally, we know that when he said to, the, to his two disciples, See, behold, the Lamb of God. And we've, we have John chapter 1, verse 22, uh, 26 to 27. And John answered them when they asked whether he was a Messiah, the Christ, or not. I baptize with the water, but among you stands one who do not, or you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. So he compared himself together with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Christ to come. And he continued in Matthew chapter 3 that I baptize you with water and repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winding fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wit into the barn. But the chef, he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, he is introducing the Lord Jesus Christ, who is mightier, who is God, Son of God, and who will baptize 
all people by the Holy Spirit and by the fire. Brothers and sisters, now we know John the Baptist is now introducing Jesus Christ. Now we find when Ephesus, when Paul came into Ephesus, the disciples of John the Baptist now coming, becoming the disciples of Jesus Christ. As John the Baptist in his lifetime, he introduced his disciples, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they became Jesus' disciples. They followed Jesus. Same thing happened now here in Ephesus as well. And on hearing this, verse 5 says, they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul said in the making of direct quotation of John the Baptist, who said, come on, Jesus Christ will come. Mightier than me that I'm waiting for, I'm preparing for the path of him who is this Jesus Christ. And the poor ladies hand upon them, and the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they began to speak in tongues and prophesying. Dear brothers and sisters, what happened in the Pentecost in Jerusalem now is happening here in Ephesus. Not only in Ephesus, all over the world, in the United States, and the Europe, European countries, and Asian countries, and African countries today, Last week, I had a chance to watch a video from uh, Rwanda that sent by a missionary. All people standing up and praising the, praise the Lord, hallelujah. They were jumping and praising the Lord. Holy Spirit came upon them. And also, we know in Chinese churches, underground churches, even though persecution were that strong and uh, severe. Still, they were worshiping God with the tears and the joy and delight. So the Pentecost was not only one time and only one place, but it is all the times and everywhere that Holy Spirit will come upon us. Amen. And they were all 12 men in all, verse 7 says, it was 120 in the first Pentecost in Jerusalem. Now we find in Ephesus 12 people, a certain connection we may find, 120 and 12. Still, the number 12 be the Israelite number. 120 comes from 12 times 10. And Israelite number in the Old Testament come from uh, you know, the, 12, the tribes, 12 tribes. In the New Testament, Jesus had 12 disciples. Now, in Jesus Christ, we have the new Israelite people. We all are new Israelites, regardless, beyond the limit, boundary of racial, ethnic. We all are spiritually the disciples of Jesus Christ, belong to the spiritual Israelites, 12 tribes. To conclude, yes, all the glories, glories to God because we set free by the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the law of the sin of life, uh, you know, the uh, Holy Spirit of life, we be uh, set free from the law of the sin and the death. Hallelujah. Now we know that John the Baptist, his ministry was supposed to be replaced by Jesus Christ. All we do is, like John the Baptist, only survive, only live by the voice in the wilderness. When we proclaim the good news of Lord Jesus Christ, and when they meet Jesus Christ directly, then we will go out to another place. Only Jesus Christ is to be honored and proclaimed. And also, the teaching of John the Baptist is supposed to be transformed to the teaching of Jesus Christ. 
John the Baptist knew that what he taught, what he baptized was incomplete one. Only good for waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ one, which is to be complete. Same thing we find, our ministry, our uh, work be incomplete. All our lives and things that are supposed to be transformed into the Lord Jesus Christ, his ministry. So through us, people may go to Lord Jesus Christ. They, they are not supposed to stop here, but they should go to the Lord Jesus Christ by way of us. The baptism of Jesus Christ was complete because it was baptism of the Holy Spirit. All the Holy Spirit's work, the complete one, as you know, the church we are now uh, attending be the body of Jesus Christ, which is not that complete in this world. But it is complete as the function of the shadow, the shadow for the coming new Jerusalem, which is the kingdom of God. So in this world, we all are supposed to be replaced and transformed by the Lord Jesus Christ. So we all are waiting for Jesus to come. As John the Baptist waited for Jesus to come in the wilderness, as he, were, he was eating at the locust and uh, wearing the skin of uh, the animal, uh, you know what, and uh, sleeping in the wilderness. So he didn't pay that much about his eating and the wearing and the sleeping. Only focused upon the Lord Jesus Christ to come. So he was the one waiting for Jesus to come. When he met Jesus finally by the Holy Spirit, he proclaimed, Behold, the Lamb of God. He proclaimed Jesus to the people. Psalm 143, verses 5 and 6. I want to make a quotation. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land like a parched land, dried land, waiting for the rain to come. We all, our hearts, a parched land, waiting for the Lord Jesus to come. Like John the Baptist waited for Jesus to come in the first coming. We are waiting for Jesus Christ in the second coming on. Amen. This is the people, as Jesus taught upon the mountain, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So people blessed who are poor in spirit, they are the ones like a parched land waiting for the reign of the Holy Spirit. God will answer you, my brothers and sisters, as he sends the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught that you seek, ask, and knock. And uh, it will be given. According to Luke, it is said, then God will give you the Holy Spirit. If we wish, if we pray, if we wait, if we ask and seek, Holy Spirit will come to us. And our old days, knowing of baptism of John the Baptist, will be replaced. And uh, our life will be transformed by Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your teaching and giving us this wonderful lesson today. As Paul came into Ephesus, some disciples were not aware of the Holy Spirit, even by the name. There Paul proclaimed the, whole, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is replacing and which is transforming the old lesson of John the Baptist. Heavenly Father, we want to be transformed. We want to be replaced with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ as we wait for the Holy Spirit to come as Jesus commanded. Oh, Holy Spirit, come to us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.